specifics as far as roles and responsibilities of um, the the organization and the preceptor and the student and the field supervisor. So we're gonna we're gonna do a breakdown of that and hopefully that'll um, you know answer some of your questions as far as you know what what your actual role is and what we you know ways to kind of um, make enhance that role so to speak. Um, we uh, Ganen and I have talked about this idea of best practices and kind of what really through the years have we seen contributes to a successful internship so we're gonna spend some time talking about that and we've got some pretty clear ideas on that um, and then we're gonna save some time for Q&A and um, hopefully get some uh, answer some of your questions as we kinda move ahead so uh, with that I'm gonna go ahead and let Gannett take over from here okay. with the next slide so I'll, I'll click over to the next slide and so this is basically discussing what the internship is for our MPH students. So uh, the public health practice, as we all know in the, in the world of public health, is pretty critical to participating in the world of public health once the students graduate. And with the master's in public health degree, the U UC Berkeley has a requirement to uh, offer and um, facilitate an internship, a three-month internship for our MPH students in the summertime between their first and second year. So the entity or the, the organization or the center that, the, that provides the academic and administrative structure is the Center for Public Health Practice in which Bernard and I and a few other field supervisors are located. So it's, and basically our role in being field supervisors is to provide support to the interns, to the organizations, and to also make sure that there's a successful and mutually beneficial internship experience. So uh, the logistics of how this all takes place, um, some of this is, is fairly fluid. So, uh, uh, but we wanted to create some parameters around it nonetheless. So um, usually the students will start their internships in mid-May and, and will go till the middle of August or right before classes start. So they're, they, they've got a pretty full schedule. The, the internship is scheduled. Um, the requirement is actually 12 weeks, 480 hours. Uh, it's a complete three months. Uh, when I said it's somewhat fluid, uh, what happens, you know, um, every year almost is that something happens in the life of a student or the life of an organization and it requires that the student might, might have to sometimes carry on a, an extra week here or there, go into the fall a little bit. If, if that happens, that, that is something that we're very open to and, you know, we've done that in the past and we just want to be, um, you know, notified of that, you know, by the student and, and kind of kept abreast of how that is all working out. Um, we really believe that the success can be, the success of the internship can be enhanced by strong communication, collaboration between the student preceptor and uh, the field supervisors. Um, Gannett, myself, and the third field supervisor is, is Jeff Oxendine, who works with um, uh, health policy and management students. So. Um, that is that is our goal is to is to you know maintain that collaborative kind of uh, mentality and effort and and lots of communication between all three of us and 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 make it happen in a positive way. So um, we've broken this down as to what the purpose is for uh, students. Well, let me go back. Did I skip too many? Hold on, Bernard, I think I skipped. Yeah, this is the, the correct next slide. So let me speak a little bit about the purpose of this practical experience for the students. Uh, first and foremost, we really want the students to apply what they have learned in their academic tenure in their first year to the work world outside of the university. So, and then to also to develop new practice-based skills. We really encourage our students to provide, um, to, to really work on creating 
professional networks to allow the students themselves to self-assess and, and figure out what they need in their personal and professional growth. And um, so this internship is really larger than just the projects that they are working on. It's really about developing their core strengths as public health professionals. And last but not least, it's to fulfill a graduation requirement for the two-year MPH students. The, the application of the graduation requirement is through units that's assigned to this course that, they, uh, that students sign up for in the fall of the following year after their internship. So it's really a holistic approach for the students and the purpose is so that they can practice new skills and practice the skills and the academic knowledge that they've attained in class. So the in, in thinking about the purpose for the organizations, one of the things that Gannett and I and Jeff uh, often talk about is this idea of reciprocity, that in fact, you know, we're really happy that um, community organizations and our community partners are able to offer internships for our students, and, and it's a wonderful thing. But we also believe that our students have a lot to offer the organizations, um, and we wanted to just say a little bit about that. All of our students have uh, strong analytical writing research and presentation skills and have taken courses in, in planning, evaluation, project management, um, and, and have a, a, a certain level of depth uh, 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 to their public health knowledge. So there's, um, they're very strong in, in that regard. Um, almost all of our students have worked prior to their entering the School of Public Health. Um, and then in addition to that, you know, in their first year they get, it, it's fairly rigorous the first year and uh, there's a strong, ac obviously there's a strong academic component uh, that prepares them for the, the professional work that they're going to be doing. Um, we at the School of Public Health, one of the things that we emphasize is the concept of leadership. Um, and to work in teams effectively and to develop skills that enable them to, to really take an initiative and, and make strong contributions to the organizations that they're going to be working in. To do that, obviously, students need strong interpersonal skills, communication skills. Uh, they are self-starters. They are folks who I like to say are finishers. They get the job done. Uh, they take initiative, and they're, they're they're excellent in that regard and so um, that's part of what they have to do while they're in school and those skills and those uh, th that knowledge and that kind of that initiative I would say really kind of follows them into their internships and into the work world in general. Um, the other thing is that and, and we all know this is that interns bring fresh ideas and energy to organizations that 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 need you know that kind of challenge that need that kind of change and so um, we've all been in the workplace and we've all been in situations where uh, you know we kind of get stuck at times I think you know with our point of view and how we kind of proceed ahead with some of our work and are a bit when, when you can bring someone in new who has that energy who has that new insight into some of the ideas that 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 uh, the organization is focusing on, or some of the concepts, or some of the the, the populations, then it it allows a whole new point of view and a a new perspective, which is uh, great for the organization. Um, and and last but not least is that um, I think our students provide a, a fair amount of diversity in terms of um, you know their backgrounds, their um, their their cultures, uh, kind of uh, their work worlds that they've been involved in. Uh, they have there's uh, they are skilled and have some strong knowledge in terms of uh, the concepts around cultural competence and cultural humility, uh, language skills. Um, so you know, depending on the student, they they are very strong in that regard. And so uh, we we really uh, believe they they will bring this to your organization. And obviously, it's a plus. Um, for the uh, for the internship and for the uh, organization that they'll be uh, working with. So the next slide is really talking about the academic requirements and policies, and um, this primarily 
relates to what the students um, are expected to, to do. Before all of these elements, the students actually have to first secure an internship, and the internship is found in, in a number of different ways. Usually, students will have contacts that they'll, they'll tap into, or students will find a faculty member that has projects or contacts outside. And then, but the majority of the students work through our center and all the different sites and positions that we have developed over the years and the contacts we've developed to offer up internships. And, and most of you, uh, I think, are return preceptors. So we're really happy to have you on board. And also that very, very grateful that you're giving the opportunity to our students. So these three elements that we're talking about is from the perspective of the students. So the first box looks at the internship agreement. This outlines the summer work plan, the learning objectives, and the public health competencies. The students uh, have been given a document that explains the entirety of the internship process as well as how to fill out this internship agreement. This is basically an outline of the work that the student is expected to accomplish by the end of the internship. So the, initially the students will draft it, they will run it by the preceptor, get an agreement, a review, edit, and a sign-off, and then they'll send it to one of the field supervisors that's working with them and with their division. So that's the first one, the internship agreement. And this is due at the second week after the students start their internship. And we say second week because different students start at different times, so it just makes it easier. So the second element is the midpoint update and site visit. This, as Bernard mentioned earlier, generally happens in the month of July. So this is basically a check-in. It's not an evaluation, an assessment, or it's not anything scary for the students or for the preceptors. We just want to be in touch to see how things are going, if the expectations are being met, if the preceptor and the student are getting along, if the site is okay, um, you know, just just a check-in. It usually happens in person, especially for the folks that are the students that are uh, local. The student will initiate a time, a meeting between what works for them, their preceptor, you folks, and and the field supervisor, and set up maybe an hours meeting at some point. So for the Local folks, it may be it may be a site visit, an in-person site visit. Either myself, Bernard, or Jeff may stop on by at the scheduled time. For some folks that are out of town, it could be over the phone, or it could be an emailed form. And the questions are pretty standard, and we can go over it a little bit later. The third element is the evaluation uh, of the of the student intern. A lot of this can be done online. So we will be sending out from the Center for Public Health Practice a reminder and the form that needs to be completed after the internship is completed. And so the preceptor will be asked to evaluate the student. The student will also be asked to evaluate the internship site and the experience. A lot of this will be done online, so stay tuned. We will email you. But before that the evaluation is submitted back to CPHP, we really, really encourage a discussion of the evaluation in form of a constructive feedback uh, with the student. So the, the, interns, the student intern will have something to actually be able to be happy about or work on in the following year, and it's, it's really encouraged. So um, these are the three big elements from the perspective of the student. Can I just add something? Sure. sure. Gannett. Yeah, I just wanted to say one of the things that I'm that really impresses me with um, this group of students that we have is that they're they're open to the feedback. They're open to you know hearing what um, what folks have to say about their work. And I think the bottom line for so many of our students is how do I get better at this? How do I become a better you know professional in the field of public health? And so. Um, 
they're open to the critical feedback and they're open to you know hearing you know things that they can do to kind of enhance the the work that they've uh, been involved in or the work that they will be involved in in the future so um, th th that's always a good thing for me um, you know I've I've worked with students for a, a number of years and it's it's always hard when folks are cl they're not open to the feedback and it just makes it that much more difficult but I think our students for the most part are, are pretty open to that to that uh, to that option so um, let me go to the next slide um, um, Gannett has already spoken somewhat about this the internship agreement the, the, the couple things that I would say about the the agreement is that I'm, I'm always surprised when I go out and I talk to preceptors and preceptors will tell me that they have students from other uh, MPH programs and there there isn't anything like an internship agreement that they have to complete uh, and that Berkeley is a little different in that regard. We see the internship agreement as really a planning tool for uh, the student and the preceptor in the organization to um, outline the, the body of work that they're going to be involved in uh, during the course of the 12 weeks. Um, as Gannett said, it's initially drafted by the student, um, but but uh, often you know done in conjunction uh, with the preceptor and um, obviously. Um, uh, reviewed by the preceptor and so um, it, it's one of those things where um, it, it, everybody's on the same page everybody knows what the student is going to be doing uh, what their contributions are going to be for the summer what their deliverables are for the organization um, and it, it just a, it's, a, it's a clarifying document that that helps us helps the student I think and helps the organization proceed through the summer um, sometimes it needs to be modified you know, as as things sometimes change uh, during the course of um, the summer, the, uh, things are added on or things are taken away, um, and we ask that we 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 always ask the students to kind of keep us uh, informed about those changes. Uh, the preceptor should review and sign off on it, and then, as Gannett said already, that it would be submitted um, probably by the end of the second week of their of the internship. So, um, it's a it's a learning tool. It's a, it's a planning tool. It's something that kind of keeps the student on track as far as the body of work they're going to be involved in. And generally speaking, I think it's it's a it's a very it's a very good thing. It's a positive thing to. Um, kind of keep folks uh, focused and kind of keep them on their on you know in in, in a positive direction so um, let me switch over to the next slide go ahead okay so in in continuation some of the academic requirements and policies the internship agreement was something that we, we pulled together and designed like Bernard said to keep everybody in, on the same page and one of the things that we wanted to include is uh, information about the public health competencies what are the objectives that fit into the larger public health competencies that um, we are required to impart to our students from the accreditation units and also from the schools of public health just basically for the degree program and some of these competencies we've listed them out here and these include things like public health knowledge um, examples could be research evaluation policy development all of those types of activities fall within the public health knowledge and competencies umbrella then another competency is public health leadership so things like problem solving cultural competency decision making communication if there are any elements of the work that relate to uh, cultural competency, for example, the student will write it under the public health leadership competency. And students have been instructed as to how to formulate some of, some of these requirements and how they uh, will write it out in their internship agreement. And when you see the form, it's actually very, very good, and you'll be able to see what we're talking about. Uh, some of the other competencies that we have listed here are like the key factors that influence the organization or project, something like understanding the organizational system, uh, current trends, funding uh, policies. And then last but not least, which is very important, is the personal and career development. 
the networking and career, career exploration, uh, basically identifying trends and opportunities to match the student's interest and direction. So these are things that students uh, will be working on while they're with you, and some of it will be notate, notated down in the internship agreement, and you'll be able to see it and review it, give them feedback, as well as sign off on it when, uh, when it's all uh, correct and on the, on the same frequency or uh, page as the students is. Are there any questions so far? Uh, you know, you can type in a question, and one of us will be able to answer it for you. Yeah, or you can save them till the end too. Right. We can, we have a we have Q and A time there too. So, um, okay, let me. Here's so, um, much of this we've we've mentioned briefly already, but we we did want to you know uh, spend some time on on each of these areas specifically, the midpoint and uh, the midpoint update and site visit. Uh, one of the things that really was interesting to me when I started working here was there was there was kind of a, a fear factor with the uh, midpoint update and site visits. Stu students were uh, somewhat leery and, and wary of us coming out and seeing the, what they were going to do, what the work they were involved in, and talking with their uh, field supervisors, uh, rather preceptors. And um, you know what? What we've really tried to emphasize is that this is really an update. This is a check-in time. This is a time for us to kind of just see how you're doing, talk to your preceptor, uh, have a chance. If there are issues or if there are problems, we we definitely want to hear about them. But it's you know it's it's a good meeting. It's a good time to just have that check in and and see where everyone's at is it you know we want students to have a strong learning experience uh, you know so far is the at that midpoint is is that their experience or are they um, you know are they frustrated in any way or you know what is going on for them and and uh, we try to do it in a way that is um, makes it positive and good for the student but also for the organization so um, you know, it's it's a very important part of the the summer, and and it's uh, something that we uh, it, it's fun for us to do. It's fun for us to get out and and see all the preceptors and and chat with you all and and see our students. Uh, it's this this whole visit is initiated and scheduled and really facilitated by the student. Uh, we encourage the student to facilitate the meeting to. Um, Talk about their accomplishment, their their, their pr the progress, the the challenges that they faced. Uh, if they have concerns or issues, um, it's also time to reassess the work plan if if uh, need be, uh, and and look at learning objectives and also what is their final project going to be. You know what is that final project um, going to look like, and we we ask students to talk about that a little bit, uh, and then as as the states generally catch up. Um, the way I do it, uh, I think all the field supervisors do these slightly differently. I like to do it, uh, the meeting usually takes about an hour, maybe a little longer. The first half hour I like to meet with the student, chat with them, and then uh, bring in, just so I could hear what's going on from the student perspective, then uh, the second half hour bring in the preceptor or preceptors and uh, have a have a roundtable discussion about how things are going uh, thus far. Um, um, it's always great when you can get a tour of, of the site and the you know get a look at the materials and projects that that student that our students are working on. Um, and you know, uh, obviously uh, for the international students or the non-local in, uh, internships, um, we either do a telephone or an email or some sort of some sort of um, uh, connection that is that that uh, that uh, we reach out to students in other ways to to follow up. Uh, um, I have a student in Samoa this summer. I really wanted to go to Samoa, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen this summer. So uh, I'm going to have to do an email uh, follow up uh, with her. So. Gannett, I don't know if you want to add anything to this as far as what your experiences have been with this midpoint. Uh, um, generally, just to say, reiterate what you said, and it's it's all of my site visits have been very positive. 
uh, it's a chance for the students to speak uh, about their experience. Uh, it's a chance for the field, for the preceptor and or supervisor at the site to check in with us as well. So it's really a check-in to see how everything is going and uh, to reconnect with yeah. the preceptor if we haven't talked to them. So uh, no, I, that's that's about it. Okay. 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 So next slide. Yeah. Uh, so the the element, the final element uh, for the requirements is uh, something I mentioned a little bit earlier. These are the evaluations. They're not due until the end of August, which is generally the end of most of our students' internships. And uh, so there's a, a couple of different ones. One is the preceptor evaluation of the student performance. It's an online form with a with a reminder that will be sent out to to you uh, when when it's time or close to the time, then uh, what we what I'd initially had said is uh, that it's really encouraged to speak with the student about some of these constructive uh, words to them, uh, places where they've excelled and gone beyond uh, their call of duty, or some places uh, or some parts of their professional experience with you that could use improvement and some tweaking. So we highly encourage that discussion. So they will be, and they most of the time, as Bernard had said, students are very open to this because it, it really will develop their uh, professional and launch their professional careers in the right way. Okay. So um, part of the requirements for the um, field supervisor, your role is to approve the internship agreement um, and um, that's, you know, as I said, the body of work that they're going to be involved in. So your final approval, your, we you know, always obviously want you to participate in the midpoint site visit. We want to meet you. We want to chat with you. We want to have that opportunity to check in. Um, we we highly value, as do the students, the uh, the evaluation, um, and so conducting that student evaluation, that final check-in with the student prior to their leaving your organization in August is is critical and very important. Um, and then we want, you know, since we're not there, we want you to obviously ensure that the students complete the, the full 12 weeks, the 480 hours uh, to receive full credit for their internship. So that's, um, that's, uh, the, that's a major part of what your role will be uh, this coming summer. Let me go on to the next slide. So um, here's a very general timeline of when things happen and this is for your benefit for preceptors benefit so mid-may which is around now uh, well now we're kind of towards the end of it students starts their internship and then in early June as Bernard had mentioned earlier students will draft initiate and um, get sign off from preceptors on the internship agreement form then in mid-june that's when they send that into the field supervisors and we keep it here on file and in July the midpoint site visits the check-ins as we like to call them then in the middle of August um, emails will be sent to remind you to complete the evaluations it's basically around the time that internships end and you know, like Bernard had mentioned earlier, there could be a plus or minus in terms of how many weeks students need to work in terms of when they start. So, um, if it if the end of their internship extends a little bit uh, further out than mid-August, that's fine. Just keep us in the loop. That's that's all we ask, and so we'll know uh, where where things are and where the evaluations are. And then at the end of August. August 31st is when the students' final assignments are due and when the evaluations are due back from, from them as well as from you, the preceptors. Uh, and final assignments is really the student's responsibility and we have, we have offered them a, a variety of different choices of what they can turn in. Uh, we're not going to get into the details of the final assignment in this uh, presentation, but it's generally, we highly encourage students to produce 
works for their internship site internship sites and that could be the items that they turn in for their final assignments if 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 they decide that that works but that is generally something that the students and the field supervisors can discuss and come to an agreement on uh, so the evaluations and the final assignments are due at the end of August and then on September 27 of this year this is actually the actual date it's a Tuesday evening we would generally like to invite you and the students uh, to come and join us at this wonderful reception where we get to reconnect and uh, and and check in uh, we usually have some good food and a little bit of uh, some drinks and it's it's a lovely event and we will be sending you out invitations and this is our way of saying thank you for participating in our with with our students uh, education great okay one more I think we would go back one. Uh, one, yeah there. So the role of the preceptor um, is one of really of, of being a mentor and a, and a supervisor and, and, a, and an advisor and a coach um, all in one. So um, I think the best preceptors are, are, the, are the folks who, who really reach out to their students, who are available to them, who can meet with them on a regular basis uh, and, and, and play that role um, as needed. Um, we really want the preceptor be, to be that person who provides the orientation to the organization, uh, describing the mission and the vision and just kind of what that organization is all about uh, and, and um, including target populations and any policies or procedures that, that the intern needs to kind of be aware of. Uh, including some some of the basic things around you know office equipment and, and procedures and you know kind of how to get things done so we want we want there to be a tr sm smooth transition for the intern and and for some of that to happen um, they're going to need some guidance from the preceptor um, we also believe that um, you know we want the the preceptor is in a role where they can really provide access to uh, additional meetings or, uh, or individual meetings um, uh, for the for the intern um, and uh, if you can facilitate some of that it's always a good thing and it, it just kind of opens up the world of, of that organization to the student uh, instead of being you know just behind their desk or you know at a cubicle um, they get to get out a bit more and do a few things and meet kind of all the the, the the players in your organization and that's a real plus um, we we really hope that the preceptor can meet with uh, the student on a weekly basis you know at least once per week uh, uh, have a, a weekly meeting that has always seemed to be helpful uh, part of the process um, and then as I said before provide opportunities to explore career options and leadership skills through informational interviews uh, both inside the office but also outside of the office so um, you know they y y you play an important role in, in making some of that happen uh, for the student and I also think that students like to hear you know your story you know we all have a story to tell you know as far as how we became the people that we are and how we got to um, be in the roles that we currently find ourselves in and so you know um, talking about your own trajectory and your you know how you decided to you know um, get involved in public health and do this work and why you continue to do it and um, I, I think is an important part of this so you're sharing some of that information is is important and we really encourage you to to do some of that um, um, we, we've mentioned that the notion of doing evaluations at, at the end but we also believe that this idea of giving regular professional feedback on progress you know and challenges is important we all know that when we've been in probably uh, performance evaluation situations ourselves that it, it's it's tougher when you kind of get hit with everything at the end and you weren't kind of ready for it so if you can you know give that feedback throughout you know the the 12 weeks uh, of the internship uh, we see that as a as a positive thing um, and then you know uh, 
securing a workplace and, and the needed resources, a computer and, you know, just space for the person to work is, you know, very critical to uh, the success of the student in that, um, in that situation, in that environment. And so uh, your help in making some of that happen um, is um, not only encouraged but appreciated. Uh, and, and we thank you in advance for all your work in, in uh, helping the student the student uh, intern navigate some of that uh, process. So, um, go ahead, go ahead, Gannett. Okay. So um, we've kind of outlined here the role of the student intern, and in a nutshell, I won't read the entire thing, but it's really to come to work, provide professional quality work to meet the objectives and projects agreed upon in the internship agreement, uh, and to really comply with work schedules and policies and procedures of the organization. We encourage them to take the initiative for uh, leaderships, if, leadership opportunities if that is appropriate. And then to freely communicate their concerns or challenges about the internship with the preceptor or their the or the site supervisor for the student and or with the field supervisor, so it could be addressed in a timely way. And in addition to the other elements we discussed, they the students' responsibility would be to facilitate the midpoint uh, site visit as well as completing the internship agreement and the evaluations and and doing a good job. So. Uh, these are this is the role of the student we reiterate them often and uh, yeah that's that's pretty much it and to do the work that is really suggested and designed for them through the internship agreement okay go back one okay so the role of the field supervisor um, myself and Gannett and Jeff is is really to be a resource to students and uh, and preceptors as much as possible. We're here um, pretty much all summer, uh, and we are available for um, email, phone calls. Uh, you know, if you need to see us before the midpoint site visit, whatever you need in regards to this uh, process, we want to we want to be there for you. So uh, we 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 want to encourage you um, to you know, reach out to us as needed. Um, that's our job, that's our role, and we take it seriously, and, and we want to, like I said, um, be there for you as much as you need us to be. Um, we, we also want to, um, you know, if there's anything you need to, any type of technical assistance that you need uh, in regards to um, the university or any of the requirements, um, things may come up at, at different times during the summer where you you might just be seeking out some sort of information in regards to the program that the students in and the competencies that they are you know working on we're available for that um, let's see it's important to um, uh, visit the site and to be uh, you know part of the process so um, we may uh, help assess this uh, the student progress, uh, help discuss the changes that are needed in the internship agreement. As the internship agreements come into us, our role is to to look at them, to review them, and then to you know tweak them as necessary, and and or to send them back to the student and ask for you know some sort of tweaking on the on the part of the student um, to make it a, a tighter agreement and a and a better agreement. Um, and I said to be available by phone or email throughout the process. So uh, if there, if problems, if any kind of problems come up, uh, we want to be, you know, part of that loop and notified, and you know, we want to be there to help out as needed. So okay, let me switch over. Um, I just realized in looking through this that this is a duplicate slide. <laughs> So this is basically the internship agreement there organized in the form of the competencies, and we had talked about it earlier on. So in lieu of, uh, of talking about this, I can talk about the next slide. 
and it also okay. save us some time for Q&A later. Hmm. Okay, so one of these uh, one of the uh, one of the things we really um, want to share with you is best practices from the so many years of doing this internship with students. So the the main thing that students had and preceptors had said are very critical for a, a good internship is a strong orientation at the beginning of the internship. This may include uh, basically orienting the student to the divisions, the, the layout of the place, the office, uh, introducing them to the right people, uh, the office folks, uh, the supervisors, uh, um, and office uh, administrative uh, assistants, as well as showing them where the coffee is or the coffee room or the copy room. And so these, this has been really a critical element in having a, a really good internship. And then another pretty essential element is having a regular meeting with the student intern. Now we all know that your schedules may be super busy and you may or may not be on site all summer, but we, we do highly recommend that you, you meet with the students on a regular basis and we recommend once a week. It doesn't have to be a super long meeting, just it could be a check-in. And some of the preceptors may or may not be on site, so which means there may be a supervisor on site, which we uh, we're, will encourage to have regular meetings with the student as well. And then the, the others are suggestions for, for the interns to network. Uh, basically allowing them to meet people in the in internal or external environments for the uh, for the students um, to meet and, and network with. Um, a strong participation in the midpoint site visit. And then a thorough evaluation at the internship with constructive and critical feedback. And then really offering the student intern opportunities to practice internship I mean leadership skills. So these have been mentioned over and over that these are elements that are uh, work really well and provide a mutually beneficial good strong internship relationship between the student and the preceptor as well as us the field supervisors in the office. Do you have anything to add? Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna. I was just gonna say, uh, probably many of us have been in situations where we've started new jobs or we've done internships ourselves, and you know, one of the first things that's given to you is um, is some sort of um, booklet of the organization or some sort of you know a binder with all the work and the body of work that the organization is involved in and you're supposed to kind of spend the first week or two weeks just kind of reviewing that and and we understand that sometimes that's you know an important part of this but you know it, it um, if, if that's the only thing the student is doing that you know students it, it sometimes doesn't work for the student in terms of their orientation so and um, it, it's it's a critical part you know getting you know the, those first two weeks are really critical to kind of the direction of the work that they're going to be involved in and um, how they feel about their internship and their organization and so um, you know whatever you can do to to help facilitate that orientation process uh, is very much appreciated by us because it, it makes the student feel like they're a part of something that they're um, you know they're integral to the mission of the organization and that they're contributing and that's what they want you know um, 12 weeks isn't a lot of time but it's enough time to really do some positive work and, and we really believe our students can make those contribu contributions so um, I think we're ready for Q&A unless Gannett I don't know if you had anything else to add at this point or no this is this is good we're up yeah. we're good and we're open to answering some of your questions if you'd like to chime in Great. So this is Ben. Um, I'm. I'm just going to let people know if you. If you want, you can click. Uh, if you have access to it, you can click on the microphone at the top uh, of the of the window. If you don't have access to that, you can always chat in your questions. And I see uh, Ami Zota has a has raised her hand. His hand. Sorry. Um, and uh, if you have access to the microphone, please feel free to do it. Otherwise, you can type in your um, question in the chat.
question is how do we set them up? Well, it's, it's actually the responsibility of the student to set up the uh, midpoint site visit. So uh, we, we put the onus of responsibility there on the student. What they would do is they would work with you to pick a day and a time. Um, like I said, I normally do them in an hour. I know Jeff and Gannett, you guys might take a little extra time, hour and a half maybe. I'm not sure. Um, and then they would you know notify us and we would just work on figuring out a time um, so what what I generally do is I ask the student to check in with the preceptor and or supervisor about a, a couple of options of dates and times that work for for the student and the preceptor and then they check in with the field supervisor to make sure that their calendar is open as well because we will be doing a lot of site visits in July. So usually what I've been doing is I've been trying to schedule fo uh, students in, in an area, in one area, sort of around the same time. So um, basically the student will have to make sure that the calendars work for everybody. and we go from there. If it's completely impossible to set up an on-site visit, then we can work together and set up a telephone conversation. But it's still up to the student to to initiate that and facilitate the meeting once it happens. Then Brian asked a question about um, the slides and receiving a soft copy of the slides, and we're happy to provide that. That is not a problem. That that's easy enough to do. So, more In questions? Fact, uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over to um, another view now, okay. um, where I believe we are sharing currently sharing, and you can download um, the slides uh, directly from Connect here. So. Oh, cool. oh, great. Everyone's view should have changed. There is a file share um, in the upper right hand. Hopefully everyone can see that. Um, That's good. There's another question from Kathy Kodama. When do we end, when do we develop end project? Will there be guidelines for that since it seems it should be planned early on? I can answer Good that. Animal. I think Ka Kathy is yeah. going to be. <laughs> um, I think Kathy is a preceptor for one of my students. Hi, Kathy. Um, the final project is is an op there's a number of options that we have offered and shared with our students. Uh, it, it could be a paper, it could be a report, it could be a presentation, uh, but as I was saying earlier, it's really, uh, we highly encourage uh, final projects that are already being completed for the internship. We, we didn't want to add uh, paperwork or basically uh, additional work to the students or during their summer internship. So if there is anything that you as a preceptor and as an organization are asking the students to, to complete and conclude and write up or present, that is the piece that they can also turn in to us, CPHP, to the field supervisors as a final project. If there is nothing that the students are presenting or submitting to the organization, then they can write um, a report. They could uh, type up notes on a presentation of something that uh, of the, about their internship or about their project, about their experience. They can also do a, pro, a professional poster, which many students have done. Uh, they've included data, uh, including the process and the data collection pieces from their projects, if that's the type of project they're doing, onto a professional poster, which they later present at a later conference. So uh, there are a number of options, and we have a really a good document that summarizes all of that for our students. It's called the 2011 Internship Guidelines, and uh, all the students have access to that from our shared drive uh, on campus. And if you have further questions, I'd be happy to, to check in with you if you'd like. Uh, did that answer your question? 
<laughs> you know, the the other thing I would just mention um, is that uh, many many of the internships students are actually doing several projects so there there's a body of work that they do and with those projects there's a there's a write up as Gannett has said so maybe they're doing a needs assessment or maybe they're doing some sort of powerpoint presentation for a group or maybe they've done uh, some sort of planning for a, an actual event um, so Part of what I'm trying to say is that students uh, oftentimes, um, m many internships are project-based. They'll do several different things. And what I've gotten in the last couple of years is that, is that uh, many students have turned in to me not just one project, but like almost like a portfolio of their work that they did for the summer internship. And, and uh, they submit you know, the, the two or three or four things that they've been working on. Uh, maybe one's a PowerPoint, maybe one's a small paper, maybe one's a needs assessment. So it could be um, any number of things. And so if someone is doing, if there's a body of work, you know, we, we encourage them to include uh, as much as they're comfortable as, as, you know, to share that with us and, and we would, that would go into their um, final project file uh, here at the School of Public Health. More questions? But he's typing. Yeah. Um, there's a question. I'm not sure if everybody can see it, but it's it's asking if uh, folks could use internal forms for, as timesheets, and that's perfectly fine. And timesheets and and elements like that, we, we we don't really need to see it since we're considering this as uh, a job for them. They basically report to their supervisor or preceptor on site. So. However way you'd like to handle timesheets, you, you, can, you can work with the students. Are there any more questions from the audience? We've got a smiling face. <laughs> Oh, Peter has got thumbs, thumbs up. up. Okay. <laughs> Typing in a question. Oh, lovely. You know, you know, I I just want to say too that um, uh, when I came over to the School of Public Health and uh, started working with the grad students and started working with, you know, this whole issue of placing students in community organizations, my first thought was, how are we going to do this? I mean, there's a lot of students, and you know, how are this? It's a it's a tough fit sometimes to to make this happen, and. I was just amazed at how many community orgs are out there that you know support us, that work with us, that um, that want to work with graduate students, our graduate students, and it's just it's kind of a gift to us and to our students that you all are you know doing this work, uh, and we you know we couldn't do it without you, so it's it's very much appreciated, and we thank you for you know um, supporting the school and and obviously for supporting our students uh, through this process. And uh, my contact info, I just typed in my email address, and it's for some reason it's not highlighting my first name, but my email address is Gannett underscore Sepsibe at berkeley.edu. So the whole thing is my email, the whole, um, my first name underscore last name at berkeley.edu. And for Bernard, should I type it in for you, Bernard? Would you? Yeah. yeah. Griego 
at berkeley.edu. And we are working throughout the summer, so feel free to email us at any time. And we really, really hope that your internship experience with our students goes really well. And it's, it's been our experience that internships are wonderful uh, experience yeah. for both our preceptors and students. And we definitely would like to see you on September 27th when we have our reception. So if we don't have any more questions, uh, perhaps we can close out. Okay, hey, well, thank you, Bernard and Gannett, um, and thanks everyone for attending. Thank you. Um, we're yeah. We're going to go ahead and stop the recording and sign off, and uh, we will talk to you all soon. Thank again. you, Ben. Thanks so much. My pleasure.